I'm here with Dr. Romano to do questions involving square roots and cube roots. Hi, I'm Dr. Romano, a professor of organic chemistry here at Romano Scientific and the creator of the Orgo Man products and the author of the Dot Destroyer book. I'm here today with Professor Blois. We're going to work some questions on square roots and cube roots, and we are continuing to add to our video library, so check out our other videos that we have for you and be ready to crush the dot. All right, Professor, if you can enlighten us, please. Okay, Professor Boyce here. Let's take a look at these expressions involving square roots. We want to evaluate the first square root. Okay, 250,000. Now, notice that every time we have double zero here, this is like a product of 100. Here's another double zero, because we know that when we divide a number by 100, we eliminate zeros. When we multiply by 100, we add two zeros. So here we have 20, it's a, uh, I can break this expression down into 25 times 100 times 100, which will, if it in its square root form, the square root of 25 is 5, the square root of 100 is 10, and the square root of 100 is 10. So we have 5 times 10 times 10, and that's 500. There's a shortcut you could use to solve these problems if you partition the uh, expression into decimal places that are pairs, pairs of decimal places, you can realize that two zeros is gonna turn into one zero, two zeros is gonna turn into one zero, and the square root of 25 is five because of the explanation that we uh, just discussed over here. So you can arrive at 500 without having to explicitly make these little calculations over here. Now let's go to the square root of a number that's smaller than one, a, a decimal number, and here we have point, the square root of point 0000049. Well, every double zero here is a multiplication by 1 one hundredth. 1 one hundredth, 1 one hundredth, and this is, well, 49. But uh, when we, if we apply the same shortcut, instead of taking the square root of each one of these sequentially, we can do the same thing. Partition the decimal place starting from the decimal point into pairs. I know that the square root of 100 is gonna be 1 tenth, so two zeros is gonna come out as one zero. The square root of 1 one hundredth is 1 tenth. That's gonna come out as one zero. Two zeros comes out as one zero again. And the square root of 49 is seven. So I can evaluate the square root by this uh, simple shortcut process by once again partitioning the decimal number into pairs of numbers and then taking the square root of each number, realizing that double zero means a multiplication by one one hundredth when it's to the right of a decimal point. Okay, let's use that strategy in evaluating this square root of a product. All right, the square root of uh, 1.44, I think we might know that is just 1.2. Okay, it would be a good idea to memorize the perfect squares between 1 and 9. And so you know, or at least 1 and 13, so you know that the square root of 144 is 1.2. Okay, what's the square root of point 0.0009? Let's use our partitioning technique. If I partition this number, decimal number, from the decimal place, I'm going to get the square root of two zeros. That's like the square root of 1 one hundredth is 1 tenth. The square root of 9 is 3. So this becomes 1.2 times 0 0.03. And using the same technique here, from the decimal point, I'm going to partition it into two parts, right, two decimal places. The two decimal places are going to come out as 1. And here I, ha I can take the two pairs of decimal places and look at this as 144. So I know the square root of 144 is 12, so I can write this as 0 0.12. Uh, sorry, 0 0.012. All right, all I have to do now is multiply these numbers across. Uh, 1.2 times 3 is, uh, let's see, that's going to be, well, I know that 1.2 times 12, 12 times 12 is 144. And that's going to be times 3. That gives me 4, 8, 12. 4, 8, 12, and 1 is 13. That gives me 4, 3, 2. Okay, that's a completely ignoring the decimal points. Now we go back and count how many decimal points there are. Let's do that together. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we take our 4, 3, 2. And from this point, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There is the solution to our square root problem.
Okay, so that wasn't all that bad. And if you use that little uh, shortcut. All right, let's look at this problem. Evaluate to the nearest tenth. Now on a debt question, you'd give, be given multiple choice questions. Evaluate to the nearest tenth. You're given the square root of 158,000 and then the square root of that. Now 158,000 uh, or 158 is not part of your vocabulary of perfect squares. So what are you gonna do? Well, what is a, a, one of your uh, vocabulary uh, perfect squares? 158,000, all right, the square root of 158,000 is going to be slightly less than the square root of 160,000. And 160,000, once I partition the decimal, once I partition this number into pairs, I see that invo it involves simply the square root of 16. So the square root of 160,000 is going to be what? The square root of 16 is 4. The two zeros come out as 1 zero. The two zeros come out as 1 zero. So the value of the inner square root is approximately 400. It's not exactly 400, and the, our actual value is going to be slightly less than 400. Well, this allows us to write, to complete the calculation. The square root, this is approximate, the square root of 400 is going to be partitioning by twos. This is the square root of four is two. The two zeros come out as one zero. So I know that the square root of 158,000 is going to be less than 20. Uh, that is the square root of the square root of 158,000 is going to be less than 20, and it may be something like 19.9 or something of that sort. Okay, so I hope that uh, gives you an idea of how to approach the square root of a square root and using the nearest perfect square in order to uh, accomplish the approximation. All right, now this next one. Let's create a little room over here. We have the four square roots, the square root of, the square root of, the square root of, the square root of, 10 to the 480th. Well, every time we apply the square root, it's like raising the number to the one-half power, okay? X to the one-half power is the same as the square root of X. So if I apply this first square root, what am I going to get? Well, how do I take an exponentiated expression to an exponent, I multiply the two exponents. 10 to the 480, 80th to the 1 half is equal to 10 to the, let's see, half of 480 is 240. So I know that value is 240. But now I have three more square roots to evaluate. So I know this is going to be 10 to the 240 and I'm going to take the square root of that, then the square root of that, then the square root of that. So this is the square root of that expression, and then the square root of that expression, and then the square root of that expression. So it's a series of multiplications by one half, and we can accomplish that simply by having each one of these. 240 times one half is 120. 120 times one half is 60, and half of 60 is 30. Wow. So there's our solution to that equation with, or that expression with four square roots. Okay, now let's go to this final problem, which is an equation. All right, it's an equation. Solve this. It's the cube root of the square root of x is equal to 2. So first, let's get rid of the power on the outside. How are we going to get rid of a cube root? Well, we're going to take the third power of each side, because this is... Uh, an expression, this is a, a, to the one-third power, the inverse operation of taking the cube root is taking the cube. So this cancels out the cube root, and this leaves me with the square root of x is equal to 2 to the third power, which is 8. How will I get rid of the square root? In a similar fashion, I will take the square of both sides, and I will get as my final answer, x is equal to 8 squared, or 64. So... That gives you sort of a summary uh, way of solving these, uh, evaluating these expressions with square roots and cube roots. I thought that was amazing. This is my actual, this was my favorite one you did. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was yeah. absolutely oh, yeah. smoking work. Yeah, you'll find one of those on the dash. Good. <laughs> um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. There were some really good tricks and techniques that I want you to make sure you write down, you put into your math destroyer, any of these additional problems. 
And if you got any questions, hit us up on the study group on Facebook. All right, good day to you, and I'll see you in future videos. Bye-bye.